Hello everyone, welcome to the Thomcraft 4 Alchemy video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Alchemy, of course. Don't mind the little golems besides me. They are going to be talked about in another video. So Alchemy is a little bit more important in Thomcraft 4 than it was in Thomcraft 3. A lot of the things you're going to create involve using Alchemy. But there are a few changes to it that are definitely worth mentioning, so let's go ahead and take a look at them. So the way alchemy worked before is that you would do exactly this. Put some lava or fire underneath the cauldron, boil the water, and toss your ingredients in to make an ingredient, or make an item. Still works about the same, but not quite the same. And what I mean is that now, aside from throwing items in to get their aspects, you also toss in a catalyst item that is specifically mentioned in each recipe. If we take a look at Thaumonomicon's alchemy section, it depicts not a really huge selection of things, but this is a little bit deceiving as there are actually a number of things that you have to throw into the crucible in order to create them. We're going to go ahead and do something simple, creating niter. Now, looking at the recipe, it shows we need three fire, light, and energy. But it's also got a picture of glowstone dust with an arrow pointing into the crucible. Now, at first I was intrigued by this, but it wasn't really that hard to figure out. You throw the crucible in, the, not the crucible, the glowstone into the crucible after you have the correct viz in the crucible itself. Now, I do have the correct ingredients on me to create some niter, so we're going to go ahead and try doing that. So, we're getting some fire and energy from the coal, and lux from the torches. Now, when we throw in the glowstone dust, we get ourselves a niter. And notice that the water did not disappear at all yet. In fact, we still have the correct energy in here. Now, as you see now, some of the energy is being boiled down into one of its base elements. And so is the Lux. Basically, any compound element is going to boil down in the Crucible if you do not throw in the catalyst soon enough, and over time, eventually, all of the elements vanish from the crucible. And after a while, all this is going to dissipate. So now alchemy does have a certain amount of time limit on things. Now, I have not actually tested this out, but does the water disappear when all the elements are gone? Nope. There goes some gas. We'll get to that in a moment. Nope, no, el no water disappears. So, you can potentially just have one crucible of water and continuously use that. Which makes you guys a little bit useless, doesn't it? You poor guys. <laughs> we'll get to why they can still be important in a moment. But for now, we're going to talk about the other half of alchemy, and that is boiling items down into their base ingredients. Now here we have a few new contraptions, and one which actually is an old contraption repurposed and remodeled. These are alchemical furnaces, and their only function is to boil down an item into its base components. These are alembics. Now, alembics used to be attached to the side of these things, and that was how you gathered Essentia. Not anymore. Now, we can take coal and gunpowder. We put the coal in the bottom slot here, 
gunpowder in the top slot, and gunpowder is made of fire and perdicio. As you see, this little bar is filling up with purple liquid. We can't really tell what it is, but if we look here, we see that some stuff is dripping out of the alembic. An alembic is placed atop of these arcane furnaces, and it collects all essentia of one type. Now, what's important to note is that it does only collect one at a time. However, oops, you can place these alembics on top of each other, and it will slowly go to the top in a particular order. You can go up to five high at the most. So, as this one fills with fire and this one fills with perdicio, the rest remain empty. Now, the others will start to fill up when they get full, of course. After all, it's got to go somewhere. Now, a cool thing that you can actually do with this is take one of your warded jars and place it below the alembic. And it will slowly, slowly fill up with the essentia that has been, play, been gathering inside the alembics. Now, I have not actually tried this, but... Well, that does seem to work, but it does look a little bit silly. After all, the tap for the one below here is inside this jar. I would recommend that if you're going to be placing these warded jars around with your alembics, to rotate your alembics around so that their spouts are facing different directions. That is, if you are really into making things look decorative. If you don't care about the spout sticking into the jar above it, do what you want. So, what was that purple gas that floated away? Well, that is one of the hazards of alchemy. In fact, we're going to go ahead and create a very large hazard right now. So, we're going to just go ahead and throw a whole bunch of this stuff in, and as you see, the crucible is filling up. Now, it can be overfilled, and that causes a purple liquid to start spilling around. This stuff is toxic. If you step in it, you will get some blindness, I think. I think I got that once. Weakness. Basically, do not ever, ever overfill your cauldrons. And, if you right-click, hold shift and right-click with the wand, it'll spill out and release gas into the atmosphere. Now, some of you might remember Thomcraft 2. If you don't, you have not witnessed the horrors of the evil called Taint. Now, Taint is back in Thomcraft 4, but it's not quite what it was before. I have only ever really seen it in Azanor's videos, and it looks pretty lethal, honestly. Now, I don't know whether overfilling your alchemy crucibles or will cause taint to appear or not, but I have, in creative mode, destroyed these aura nodes. And you might have seen in the other videos, but the grass over here is a little bit funky. Well, if I press F3, notice how it says I'm in a plains biome, which is pretty common when you're on a flat world. It's all plains biome but not quite where this grass is at. As you see, when I'm walking over the darker bits, the biome changes to eerie. So I think what we're actually witnessing here is the potential ability of screwing around with magic to alter your world itself and create a new biome within a biome. 
one that can potentially produce a massive amount of taint and drive you from your home. Ah, there we go. Yep. Hit the O button and get rid of that. Now I got a bit of nausea from that gas. And I thought I saw for a brief moment a taint effect, which is definitely new to me. But there you have it, the hazards of alchemy. Now, as you see, this has not gone away. In fact, it doesn't seem to be going away at all. The only thing I've really tried doing to get rid of this stuff is cover it up. That seems to take care of it just fine. I don't know if there's a better way of taking rid of it, but this works just fine for me. So, that's the alchemy video. Oh, and if you're wondering, you can still gather essentially in the little flask and throw those in as well. Still works just the same. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this video series so far. If you want to go and watch the research video, click on the basic information tab. Click on the thaumaturgy tab to learn about wands. Click on the artificing tab to learn about artificing. Or the golomancy tab to learn about golomancing. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and fave, guys. I'll see you next time. Take care and goodbye.